flying robots that can dock in space in midair, I think is pretty rare. I think this is the probably the only flying robots that can do that. It's like Tetris, but in 3D. Today we're testing the robots to see how well they can dock together in midair and carry objects. Mark Yim and his students have done something very new with drones. I thought it was actually somewhat of a crazy idea because it's very, very difficult, but they decided to do it and turned out to be quite exciting. How many batteries do you need? Uh, true batteries. Bruno Gabridge and David Saldana use their engineering skills to turn this idea into reality. This project is called Mod Quad, so they're modular quad rotors that dock together. The drones connect with magnets. In today's experiment, we are going to try to build two structures, a U-shape and a P-shape. The U-shape uh, are going to have seven robots total, and the P-shape are going to have five robots. Having multiple flying robots docked together is actually very difficult. Each drone is autonomous, and when they snap together, they form one big robot. After the docking right, they behave as a new rigid body. Controlling them becomes very difficult. Uh, you can't use the same controller that for each individual one, now that they're rigidly attached, everything has to change uh, in an instant, otherwise it may crash. When all join together, their center of gravity shifts. This amps up the difficulty for the team. They structure that is stable because we have all the the parameters correct, so it knows how to balance. Coming up with a control strategy that's not just applies to two quad rotors, but actually scales to an arbitrary number. Getting them to come up with this automatic way of generating the control to make arbitrary shapes is actually, I think, very impressive. It comes down to the coding software that they developed. These robots are very tiny. We send the commands to the robots by radio, the attitude or the angles that it should have in order to move in the space. To do that, we need to know the location of the robots. We have a set of cameras. They throw infrared light to the robots. That's why we have these tiny markers to localize the robot in this area. We gather like a set of points and determine like where they should dock in, in space and then uh, we just send the robots to go there. Time for the second shape. The letter U as a tribute to their university. For this case right now, the U, we have only two more robots, but just the, the fact that we're adding only two robots make our experiment much, much difficult. Same. Let's do something. Yeah, it is not going to work. Take them, take them, take them. Ready? Okay, now it should work. Work. Finally. <laughs> David and Bruno have one tough challenge left. We're gonna to try to grasp this cup over here and deposit that on the trash can. We will start with the robot right here. Oh yeah. An interesting thing is the, we can set a specific angle before the takeoff and after the takeoff it will adjust to the maximum opening angle and then we'll try to grasp the cup. What we have here is the basic commands like take off and start the procedure. It will do everything completely autonomously. Okay, here we go. It aligns the center of the cup and then actuates the gripper. We can see that we don't need any additional gripper or mechanism to grasp yeah. the cup. It's only using the, the body of the robots. It's a three-pointer. Yeah, go. And the best <laughs> way to impress their prof. You either just say, oh, why, why are you doing that? Why, are, that's crazy, and like, it's a crazy idea. I wasn't sure if they would be able to do it. That's the nicest part, right, of being a scientist, is because you have a dream, you, and you just go for it. 
It's been a lot of fun. Any type of project in which the students are essentially taking the lead and being independent um, is great for the professor because you just get to see and enjoy what they're doing.